Okay, we are going to talk about art. So what I first want to lead with is worldview. Remember that worldview, we talked about this when we talked about religion, is the term that refers to how people see their world and construct their reality. So it includes our religious beliefs, moral beliefs, ways of thinking. These are all shaped by our culture and all contribute to our worldview. So what I take to be true or real about my world is based on these perceptions. And if you recall, I talked about a person who accepts evolution versus someone who believes in intelligent design. They both have what they believe to be facts and truths that verify their view of the past. And so the evidence that each brings to the table is different. One person might accept as fact where the other person does not. So that's worldview. Art is another major aspect of worldview. It is an important way of making our meanings more memorable. So as we say, a picture is worth a thousand words. Research shows that kids remember lessons better if the textbooks have colorful illustrations than if they have black and white or no illustrations at all. And if you think about it, how often have you had a song stuck in your head, replaying it over and over again? I'll bet that never happens with a teacher's classroom lecture. Art is memorable. It touches a deeper part of our brains and therefore it's a valuable way to make material important ideas and pass those ideas from generation to generation. And this is both good in teaching our culture to our young and bad in the ways it can be used for political propaganda or to glorify things that perhaps don't deserve glory. The anthropology of art studies and analyzes the wide range of material objects produced by people around the world. These are considered not merely as aesthetic objects, but are understood to play a wider role in people's lives. For instance, in their beliefs and their rituals. And when we talk about material objects, we're talking about sculpture, masks, paintings, textiles, baskets, pots, weapons, and even the human body itself. Anthropologists are interested in the symbolic meanings encoded in all of these materials, these objects, as well as in the materials and the techniques used to produce them. So when we're talking about art, we're talking about it's a whole breadth of items. The anthropology of art tends to overlap with art history, aesthetics, material culture studies, and visual anthropology. But the anthropological approach to art really is distinguished by its focus on social processes involved in the making of objects and the meaning behind these material items. So if you think about art historians, and if you've ever taken an art history class, they are really interested in the work and the lives of named individuals. Anthropologists of art are more concerned with the role and status of the art artist in the wider community and the meaning of the art itself. And another central concern of the anthropology of art is to be to analyze the form and function of objects and to explore the relationships between these and aspects of wider society. Your book does a really, really good job of talking about performance and the reading does a nice job of discussing art, so I'm not going to add much. But one thing really isn't covered well is the connection between art and worldview or religion. It's a tight connection in many cultures. In many cultures, art only exists in religious contexts. So in many societies, the two cannot be separated. And this is just a different way of thinking about art compared to Western thought. Western thought is that art is just a form of personal expression or something pretty to hang on the wall. We don't tend to really wrap our heads around the deeper meaning of art that often. In most cultures, art is not conceived of as something simply pretty, so much as it is something meaningful and socially useful. And you're looking at on the screen a variety of different kinds of art, Native American, ancient Greek, you have Hindu, we have ancient Mayan, and so there's a lot going on here. So really consider the fact that in our culture, while we tend to look as, at art as something to look upon and really, really tend to deal with more with it, uh, its aesthetic quality, in a lot of cultures, it has much, much deeper meaning. And some important things I really want you to get from the readings. So I want you to really look at the, at the ideas of a cross-cultural definition of art and some of the social functions of art. I really want you to understand the distinctions between myth, legend, and folk tales. 
look at the role of art and continuity and change in our own culture and maybe some other cultures. And also look at the difference between studying something that's performance and studying something as performance and the role of performance in reflecting social order. And as always, shoot me an email if you have any questions.